okay. All right. Well, welcome everyone. Um, Happy New Year. I know you all are probably just starting up your semesters and I'm sure recruitment and selection is something that, um, though it's a couple months away, maybe um, it's really good to start preparing for now. Um, so my name is Sam Ha. Um, I am a 2016 Bonner grad from Ursinus College. Oh, cool. And I now work at the Foundation as Program Associate. And so this is um, the third part in um, the Senior Intern webinar series. I know not all of you guys are senior interns, which is also great. Um, so please feel free to share this. We also have a bunch of other webinars that will be hosted later in the spring, but also some that were already, um, that already occurred in the fall as well. And so that's a little bit about me. And I was wondering, um, for those of you who are tuned in now, I was wondering if each of you um, could introduce yourselves and why this webinar topic is relevant to you, just so we have a bit of context for who is here. Um, so just to make this easier, um, I'm just going to go down my list, and then you can kind of just chime in. So maybe Alyssa, you can start. <laughs> Um, hi, I'm Alyssa. I'm a junior at Siena College. Um, and I am the lead recruitment coordinator this semester for our Bonner program. Um, and we just found out we have over 600 applications to go through. So that's our big thing right now. And I just want to learn more about like what we can do to make, get the best people we can. Thanks. Um, Bailey, would you like to go next? Sure. Hey, guys. This is Bailey. I actually direct the Bonner program at Rollins College in Winter Park, but I'm here with one of our interns, Kevin. Hello. Uh, I'm Kevin Shadade. I'm a sophomore Bonner intern. <laughs> Hi, Kevin. What's up? <laughs> uh, we actually were tuning in today because I'm new to the recruitment process, but also we're transitioning from a summer recruitment to a spring. Um, so in the past, we have a Bonner Leaders program. In the past, we did recruitment with deposited students who are already committed to Rollins. So now we're doing it in the spring with accepted students. Cool. Awesome. Um, just to jump in really quick, um, would you all mind just when you're not speaking to mute your microphone just so that we reduce any of the background noise? Um, I've noticed that that's difficult to hear um, when you're listening to the recording. So thank you for doing that. Um, next, I have Emily on the list. Could you introduce yourself, Emily? Um, so hi, guys. I'm from uh, Lynchburg College. I'm a senior intern um, for a two-year program. Um, and so we um, are integrating actually to a four year um, in the next like year, half a year. Um, but we actually do recruitment in the um, like in February. So we, um, we recruit like 15 students um, from like an applicant pool of around 100. Um, but because we're integrating more so into um, a full year Bonner program um, from start to finish, it would just be good to know some things on how most programs do recruit. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Thanks. Yes. I think Mary Beth, you're next. That's okay. Um, Mary Beth is the um, water coordinator at Guilford College. Um, actually, is that right? Oh, no, at High Point University. Sorry. Um, and so I'm sure she's just, she'll, she'll pop in a little later. Um, I think April. Are you next? Yeah, sure. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, I am the AmeriCorps VISTA at Averett University. Um, we are also starting recruitment in February. Um, and we will, so I thought today would be a good opportunity just to learn more. Um, it's really cool because I was a Bonner at Lynchburg College, so I know Emily. Um, but yeah, I, I'm really excited to learn a lot more about this process. Awesome, thanks. I'm gonna pop out over here just to see. Um, so, is there? Is it Lindsay Forbes? Uh, yeah, Lindsay Forbes um, from the University of Nevada, and I'm one of the Bonner coordinators of that program. Awesome, thanks. Um, I have an Ashley. 
Hi, yeah. Um, so my name is Ashley and I am one of two senior interns at the Stetson University Bonner program. Um, this webinar is relevant to us because we actually started reviewing applications back in December and we're continuously doing that until February and then um, we'll have interviews in March. And my partner and I were kind of talking about how sort of intense this experience is because we're kind of deciding whether or not some people can come to college and we just wanted to see what the other perspectives and what sort of information you can give us so we can make those best decisions um, as possible. Awesome. Um, yeah, and whoever can go next, honestly, I can't see all the participants at this point anymore, so please feel free to share. <laughs> I'm, I'm Sister Mary from Notre Dame, Maryland University, and I have my graduate assistant, Erin uh, Gales, with me. Uh, the Bonner Leaders Program here is relatively new, and it's had a fair amount of um, handover from one person to, the, to another. Uh, I'm new to this position, um, and so I just have a lot to learn, and um, uh, both Aaron and I are really looking forward to learning about uh, this particular part of the uh, Bonner program. Awesome. Thank you, Sister Ray. Anyone else? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, awesome. Um, hi, I'm Danasia. Um, I'm a senior intern at High Point University. Um, I'm working alongside Mary Beth, um, and I just thought this webinar would be interesting since I'm kind of going to be leading um, our recruitment process this year. Awesome. Thanks, Tanisha. All right. Is there anybody else on the call? Um, I don't know if I can be heard right now. My name is Aldrin Santa Maria. I'm a graduate student interning with the Bonner's Leader Program at the University of Nevada, Reno. Awesome. Thank you. All right, did we get everybody? Okay, all right. Well, thank you for tuning in. Um, I know most of you all um, tuned in like, and typed in what you're looking for in this webinar by signing up. Um, and so I tried to tailor this webinar really to what you all are looking for. And so in terms of goals, I hope that um, by participating in this webinar, as you all leave, um, you leave with um, two specific takeaways. So one, strategies and techniques to recruit um, not only a diverse, but also a really committed cohort of Bonners that are representative um, of the cohort that you're trying to look for. And also, hopefully, you can bring back some template materials that you can adapt and use um, back on your campus while um, you're going through your recruitment and selection process. And so in order to achieve these goals, um, this is our agenda. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about selection criteria, um, then recruitment strategies. So what are ways to really recruit effectively and get um, all these applicants that you really want? Um, going through a little bit more in detail about the application and interview process, um, and then come to talking about different resources and template material that you can use back on your campus. And then um, just end with the upcoming webinars and linking back to the webinars that we've done in the past. Um, and I do want to just um, reinforce the idea that you all bring your own expertise as well. Um, so please feel free to chime in at any point in time um, about what you do on your campus, what you think is the best practice. Um, so I certainly don't think that I'm the expert, but I really am pulling together an accumulation of all of the um, resources and expertise from all of our modern campuses and our network. Um, so I just can't stress that enough. And so just to start, we're going to start with um, selection criteria. So just to go um, briefly over what the different criteria are um, that you probably have on your campus, but network wide. So the first requirement is community service. Obviously, all Bonners do eight to 10 hours of service a week. And so you really want to recruit students that demonstrate an ethic of service and willingness to serve. And so this is important because um, it's important to be inclusive of what service means as well. So that's why we use the phrase ethic of service in the sense that um, having previous service experience is also um, a privilege in a lot of senses. And so 
when you're thinking about recruiting students, think about students who've also not only held a role um, in the community doing like what you call conventional service, but also maybe held a role with significant responsibility at home. So being a caretaker in church, at school, or in the community in various aspects. So that community service requirement is certainly flexible. Next, we have our financial requirements. And so this is where um, there's a significant difference between Bonner Scholar Schools and Bonner Leader Schools. And I know you all are from a, a variety of both. And so just to briefly um, go over this, um, a requirement to be in a Bonner Scholar program is that you have at least 85% of the income in class must have a parental contribution below 10,000 because ultimately the Bonner program is meant to be um, a college access program. And so hand in hand with that, no more than 15% of the income in class may have above $10,000 as a parental contribution. And so having that um, distribution, though it's a college access program, we also recognize how important it is to also have people who come from um, different socioeconomic classes um, to kind of add their voice and kind of add to that community of the Bonner program. And so in Bonner Leader Schools, um, most of the funding comes from federal work study. And so the financial requirement for that is that at least 75% of the income in class must qualify for federal work study. And Bonner Leader programs um, definitely vary a bit more across the board. Um, and also feel free to chime in with any questions or concerns along the way too. So next, diversity requirements. Um, so generally when you're recruiting um, Bonner applicants, you wanna start um, by thinking about both the gender and ethnic and racial diversity that already exists at your institution. And so the requirement for your Bonner cohort is that, um, your Bonner program in general, is that it should achieve the gender balance that exists at the institution um, or greater. And so I know that a lot of our Bonner programs are typically female heavy. And so um, that's something just to, to keep note of. And then also the diversity requirements is that it's meant to be a college access program, but it's also meant to be um, a way to increase the ethnic or racial diversity of your institution as well. And so definitely start at what your, um, your institutions like diversity, like data is and kind of start from there. And then you try to replicate that or um, increase that diversity. And we have a couple techniques later when we talk about recruiting strategies about how to do that, um, different strategies to be able to increase diversity. And then last, we have academic requirements. And so this changes um, based on each Bonner program, but each, um, each applicant must at least across the board meet the academic admissions requirements of your institution, of course. But then besides that, there's no standard GPA requirement. Um, there's no like, uh, like SAT requirement, that type of thing. That's really up to the discretion of your own Bonner program. Um, however, it's important that um, your applicants demonstrate a commitment to bridging both academics and service. Because ultimately, your Bonner should be students first. And so there has to be a way um, for them to demonstrate that they want to connect the two in some way. And so those are a bit about the service, the um, selection criteria. Does anyone have questions about that before we move on? Okay, great. And so now um, we're going to jump into the bulk of our webinar, which is talking about effective recruitment strategies. And so the first thing that's really, really important is that you partner with your admissions team because they're the first line of recruitment. They're the ones out there that are recruiting students for your campus. And so if they know what Bonner is and what you're looking for, they're really your first line um, when they're talking to students on the road or during interviews, anything like that, um, they're really your first line. Like, hey, you should apply for the Bonner program. And this is how you can do it. And so the way that you keep admissions in line, um, not in line, but in alignment with your recruitment strategy is to make sure you have at least a yearly presentation with the admissions team. And so normally this means that you have um, one to two people in the admissions office that serve as your Bonner liaison. And so when you can either have a presentation with those two 
one, two, three liaisons, or you can have um, the liaisons present to that whole admissions team, or you can present to the whole admissions team. So there's a lot of different ways you can do this. But what's important during this presentation is that you describe the Bonner program, its model, its benefits, the financial benefits are really, really important. Um, but not only that, like the leadership and service opportunities, because this is um, one of the aspects of the program that isn't always advertised as well. And this is a way that you can normally pull in um, other applicants as well. So when we're thinking about recruiting male students, um, recruiting students who think um, Bonner is just a service, just a service group, but really it also has a lot of leadership and community aspects as well. So having this presentation be really inclusive of what you want Bonner to be um, shared with all these potential applicants. Um, so in addition to that yearly presentation, it's important that um, you as a Bonner team, um, so maybe that's Bonner staff, maybe that's you as senior interns or students or a group of you, um, be part of admissions events. So you know that admissions always has open houses, they have accepted students day, they're out on the road. Um, so make sure that you um, talk to admissions and your liaison can be a big part of that to be a part of those admissions events. Even if that's you serving on one of the panels or having one of your students serve on like the student panel, um, just to have kind of that Bonner branding out there. Last, um, Think about collecting and sharing stories. So at Swanee, which is one of our Bonner programs um, in Tennessee, they actually do their senior presentations of learning. Each senior creates um, a digital story. And so that's something that's recorded and can be shared, is shared on their website. And so cultivate these stories because that's a lot of the time that's how you pull in students um, who don't know that much about the Bonner program. I'm sure you all understand how hard it is to really describe the Bonner program to people who don't know anything about it. And so sometimes stories are the way to really connect not only with students, but with their parents as well. And last, think about tapping into the application data collection. And so um, the admissions team is always collecting data about um, like which students are uh, like, what demographic of students are being accepted into the program and um, what demographic of students are being accepted into the school. And so at having a good relationship with admissions, you can kind of tap into that data. So you can kind of see like, oh, actually we're not even having a lot of male applicants like look at the Bonner program application or we're not even having um, a lot of female students, you know, so that type of thing. Um, having a good relationship with admissions can kind of get you access to those things, which can um, inform a little better your admissions relationship as well as your recruitment process. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, how, um, with admissions, like, I, how is it that you guys get, like, so many applicants? I mean, granted, we don't work with admissions. They know about us, and we do, like, open houses. But, like, how is it um, that when people apply, they learn, do they just solely learn through admissions for most schools that are Bonner Scholar? Yeah, and, and anyone can feel free to chime in, but in regards to that, so one, it is through admissions, but it's also like that secondary piece of admissions is also like marketing. So on your website, like is it easy to find when students are like, oh, I'm interested in going to um, like Davidson College, but I know I can't afford that price. Like, is Bonner located on like the financial aid page? Is it located on like service opportunities? Um, when admissions is like sending out things to um, different students, or you you all can send it out to students too, but like are Bonner pamphlets included in those? And are is that marketing um, accurate too? So does it talk about all the benefits? Um, is it representative of the students that are in the program? So are you showing like students of color? Are you showing them doing service? You know, like all those different pieces. Okay, um, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Does anyone else want to chime in on that question? Um, I know that like one thing um, that we did at Sienna this year was we put our application right on the Common App so that people can apply right away. And that's why we have a lot of applications, which is a good thing. 
um, and then Sienna also, um, you can click on the Common App, like what we used to do, was if you were interested in doing community service, and once people click that, we would automatically get it sent to us, and then we could send them, like, more about the program and our application process. Awesome. I didn't even think about that, but that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, at Notre Dame of Maryland, our student ambassadors are share with potential students, uh, especially when they're giving them tours. Uh, we can hear them outside of our office, and uh, they often talk about the Bonner program. And so um, that's probably one of the first contacts that some of our students have. Mm -hmm. um, something I'm going to talk about next, too. Well, it's this is also another big piece of it financially, but I'll come back to this in a second. But thinking about recruitment too, another way is to really be active about outreach and recruitment. And so these are some of the different um, places that you can consider recruiting from. So think about at your school, um, like at, at your campus, what are the local high schools, after school programs, college access programs, what are the ones in your community that you can start to talk to about Bonner? And, um, and that would be a really great way to not only have a personal connection to what Bonner is, but to also recruit locally, which is also another um, target audience of a lot of our Bonner campuses. Um, like at McAllister, they have a big focus on recruiting local first generation college students. Um, and so that's one way where you can, this next slide is leverage the talent of current Bonners, but within all of these different programs and organizations, you can really leverage your current Bonners to tell that story and to go in there and put a face to what Bonner actually is. And um, a lot of like the after school programs, um, Bonners already have a connection with. A lot of Bonners already serve there. And so you can think about um, actively recruiting in the fall as well as in January before, um, before you start to um, have any applications come in. Um, we are also going to talk a little bit about a sample timeline for recruitment and selection. But consider recruiting from, actively recruiting from some of these different programs and high schools. Um, another way to increase recruitment is also to partner with your Office of Multicultural Affairs um, or Office of Diversity and Inclusion because um, they often have a goal of recruiting um, students of color, first-gen students and supporting them throughout their time um, on campus. And so Bonner has been shown through a lot of our studies to also be a really great support tool um, for students of color, for um, minority students, that type of thing throughout their four years. And so partnering with them, you can kind of align your goals together and you can work together on this. Um, and last, thinking about, so not only like high schools and programs, um, but also think about how you appeal to parents too, because a lot of the time parents are the ones really focused on um, financial aid for their children. And so how can you appeal to them? So another avenue to recruit from is also going to local resource centers. Um, so I know here in Trenton, um, I'm located in Princeton, New Jersey, but I um, serve with El Centro, which is a, a resource center that is, um, that targets like Latino and Latina families in Trenton. And so um, I did a presentation with um, TCMJ at some point to be able to talk about um, like parents, like how can you afford to send your, your kids to school and thinking about, and then I did a presentation about Bonner there. And so think about different ways that you can also leverage those different um, avenues. And so just talking about leveraging the talent of current Bonners, so that could be Bonner staff doing that, but that can also very much be current Bonners. And so um, I know you all probably, all of your Bonners probably came back from um, winter break already, but think about in next, like the next few years, or even now when people, when your Bonners go home um, or in the local area, they can each be tasked with going to their old high school or their church or community organizations and service groups that they're a part of and talking about Bonner. And so, um, and kind of getting the word out about Bonner that way. Um, they can do outreach at the community organizations that they serve. So that's what we're, I was saying earlier, where a lot of the, the local community organizations 
um, that we can recruit potential applicants from are also sites that our bonders already serve at. And so leveraging that as well. And then once you have a bunch of applicants that are interested or you're just talking about it, also think about hosting pr prospective applicants on campus as well. So think about maybe establishing a day or two for any um, applicants, no matter how young, too, to just come and then they can talk to Bonners and they can have like a mini, um, like a mini info session almost. And you can kind of garner some excitement around that, too. Um, so those are a couple strategies. And I just wanted to pop back um, to financial aid, too. So um, I think it's really important just to touch on this really quick. Uh, because it's important to partner with admissions, but it, I think it's also extremely important to partner with financial aid because um, with the college access piece of our um, of our programs, we want to make sure that financial aid um, is a good partner so that they can um, really share the benefits of being a part of this program, um, but so that you can also get applicants um, who understand that they can afford going to your school if they're a part of the Bonner program. And so like admissions, make sure um, it's good practice to have at least a yearly check-in with financial aid um, because they really play a key, um, a key role in determining students that are eligible for your program. So that's especially important for um, thinking about those numbers, like those financial um, requirements. So um, how many students are eligible because they have um, an EFC below 10,000 or above 10,000, or how many students are eligible to, um, to get federal work study awards. So they're really important in helping you determine eligibility, but, and not only for students coming in um, in the fall, but also thinking about candidates, um, if one of your bonders for whatever reason has to leave the program and you're trying to um, replace those positions in the middle of the year, they're also really important in helping you find students that are eligible for those. And so, really quick, yes, um, do you guys ever um, send out like I know that financial aid um, they have like a list of individuals and so they know who is involved in that. Do you guys ever send out um, like um, information through their serve list like of course we can't do that because it's um, information but can they do that for any of you guys like about Bonner kind of like sending it to students who are incoming or who are on um, or on the list of financial aid do any of you have an answer to that question do any of you know? Can you just clarify, like, you're saying um, you want to know how we bring across, like, oh, this is, like, how our Bonner program is able to, like, help you financially? Yeah, like, um, because we're a Bonner leader program, it's different, I feel like. But yeah. I wondered if you guys work with financial aid and know, um, like, have awareness of who um, who could benefit from the Bonner Leader Program um, yeah. or the Bonner Scholar Program. Yeah, we're a Bonner Leader Program, too. And I know our director, she, like, is aware, um, makes aware, like, in interviews and, and when we're, like, talking with applicants, like, mm -hmm. um, we have like federal work study positions, like if you qualify, like we're able to match so-and-so like with our financial aid. And I think like, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think um, our financial aid like works with uh, our Bonner director to okay. like give, to like, not like, like separate applicants, but to highlight the applicants that like do qualify so we can fill the positions that we have like, within our- yeah, within okay. our program. Okay, thank you, that's great. You're and I think it's, it's helpful to know, like um, at Stetson actually, um, they have a really close relationship with both admissions and financial aid. And so Bonner, the Bonner application is embedded right into um, their campus application and it's streamlined so that um, students who qualify based on um, like their financial aid and stuff and are interested can just check that they're interested in the Bonner like leaders program there and then um, it kind of streamlines it so that they get automatically get sent the application and so um, it kind of 
not weeds out, but kind of filters a little bit based on that. Um, but I know that it's important for you to, um, for Bonner staff or Bonner students to be able to talk and have that partnership because it depends on each campus what um, like the Bonner program can know, like based on um, like security and privacy and that type of thing. So it's, it's good to just like kind of flesh that out a little bit and talk to them about it. Okay. Um, and so last I just wanted, I know I touched on this earlier, but um, just thinking about um, what type of marketing you have, like what's your Bonner branding. And so think about on your campus website, do you have Bonner on your campus website, um, on the materials that are mailed out, on advertisements for your, um, for your campus videos that are um, shown, that type of thing. Like are you, um, is there a Bonner presence in all of those things? And um, especially for things that you're sending out and on your website, um, there's a couple of really important things to make sure that you include on there. So thinking about, do you have really clearly defined benefits? Like what are the benefits of being a part of this Bonner program? And also the expectations. So I know that um, some of our Bonner programs just have trouble um, like with retention over time because Bonner, it, it's hard. It's a lot of work. And so it's also important to make sure that applicants know what they're coming into um, beforehand. And that kind of helps with um, retention and commitment to the program. Um, is it visually appealing and representative of the students um, that you're not only trying to recruit, but also the students that are already present in the program? Um, and I'm gonna show you a couple of examples here. And is it easily found? Um, so can people find information about this easily, both under civic engagement and service to attract those students who already have a natural inclination to wanting to do service at school? but also students who are looking for ways to afford school. Is it under financial aid and scholarships? So in regards to um, marketing here, are a couple examples from our network. So this is Guilford here. So um, you can see how um, you can click on each of like the first year, sophomore year, junior year. So it's, you, it's um, inclusive of how it's a developmental model. Um, but also financial assistance below. So this is a modern scholar program. So it shows all of the different financial um, benefits that come with the program. So this is right on the website. Um, this is Stetson. So like you can see, it's the same thing where it has the application timeline, has financial aid, has um, program requirements. So what is your um, website presence? Um, this is Rollins, so shout out Bailey here. Um, it's like also thinking about, so this is also, it's like a PDF that's on their website. Um, so this could also be sent out, this could be printed out, but how are you really talking about what Bonner is? And so this is a four year map that talks about um, how the four years um, are developmental, but also how it changes and how you progress through the four years in the Bonner program. So people who are, for applicants who are interested, they really get a good idea of what it means to be a part of the modern program. Um, there's no doubt that it's a four-year program, too, too. Thanks for the shout out. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, and so this is from the University of Richmond. This is um, a handout that they, um, they print and send out to potential applicants. So you can see how it's visually appealing. Um, it also has a back to it too that kind of describes more about the Bonner program. Um, but this is another example. And Sienna, you guys also have a shout out here. Um, and this is like a little booklet um, that describes the Bonner program. And it's also representative in the sense that you can see that there are students here that are actually in the Bonner program. And so, um, just to think a little bit about these, how it, Bonner's not only, um, you're not only recruiting for the Bonner program, but it's also a yielding tool um, for the campus itself. Because if something, if Bonner is really desirable and students are applying to your school for the Bonner program, then you're getting more applicants for the school in general. So that's also something that you can use when you're partnering with admissions or financial aid. That Bonner's really a great thing, that if you market Bonner well, you also increase students that apply to your, um, your campus as well. 
And so those are a couple examples of um, marketing that you can use. And all of these are also on our, um, our Bonner Wiki, so you can like download them and read them and adapt them yourself. Um, and I have a link to the Bonner Wiki a little later. And so thinking about these recruitment challenges, um, we said earlier that um, there are a couple things that across the Bonner network have been challenging for each of our Bonner campuses. So um, one, recruiting students with high financial need, two, recruiting male students, and three, recruiting minority students. And so just to think a little bit about how to address each of these recruitment challenges, um, to try and recruit students with high financial need, a lot of the reasons why um, this is difficult is because high need students um, kind of rule themselves out of most of our campuses because they're usually small liberal arts schools with um, a high price tag. So a lot of the times, high need students kind of just rule that school out altogether. And so to try and combat that is really trying to have a good um, web presence, especially on the financial aid packaging. And also to have your admissions and financial aid partnerships to have the staff in those departments really, really amp up um, the financial aid benefits. And so it kind of links in also with the fact that it's challenging because a lot of um, these students may be unaware of the Bonner program. And so that's something that can be combated with um, deliberate outreach, especially to local schools and um, organizations that we work with. In regards to recruiting male students, um, it's really important to try and package um, and present the program in a way that kind of emphasizes the leadership and service opportunities as well as the community building opportunities. And um, so that's something that we've found um, from talking to a lot of students, um, a lot of modern programs that recruit male students is that um, a lot of male students are really attracted to um, that leadership component of it. So having that be a forefront of it. Um, also, it kind of pulls into to have representative marketing too, to make sure that you include um, male students in like admissions open houses as people who are doing outreach, but also in all of your marketing materials too. Um, so just having applicants see that there's a wide range of people that are part of this program and that it's inclusive. And it's similar for recruiting minority students too, making sure that um, your marketing and recruitment materials are representative of the students that you're recruiting and also that are in the program. Um, and this also just very much comes down to intentional outreach. Um, we've talked about this a bunch, but making sure you go out to um, specific organizations and schools that really target um, and support recruiting minority students. And a way you can do that is to collaborate with the Office of Multicultural Affairs. Um, does anybody want to share any of their own strategies um, for effective recruitment before we move on to the um, interview and application process? That's okay, no worries. <laughs> um, so we'll check right along. Um, so this is where we'll have a lot, um, I'll be sharing a lot of template materials. And so when you're thinking about the application and interview process, um, it's really important to establish a really um, committed committee. <laughs> and so um, the people that kind of make up this group um, are often Bonner staff, of course, but also including Bonner students, community partners, because they can really lend um, a really great voice to who would be great at you know serving with them um, campus staff because ultimately when you're thinking about the Bonner model it's not just students in the community but also building a campus-wide culture of service um, thinking about faculty especially if you have an academic component to your um, Bonner program and alumni as well so I know Barry College um, does outreach to alumni in the area and they kind of sit in on a couple of their interviews and help read a couple of applications as well and so with this committee, um, they can help in any one of the, the pieces that we've already talked about, outreach, but in regards to, um, they can really help with like reading applications and helping with interviews. And so now thinking about this timeline, um, so I know um, in like that survey that um, 
you all like participated in to sign up for this webinar um, that specifically you all wanted to know a little bit about a timeline for recruitment and selection. And so this is kind of a sample timeline based on what a lot of Bonner campuses use. And so generally in the fall and in January, there's a lot of outreach. Um, and so that's when like um, over winter break, Bonners are going back into their local high schools. Um, in January, you come back and you start doing outreach in the local areas, especially for um, students who are trying to think about narrowing down their colleges, where they want to go. And so that's a lot of the time that you're doing that. And also, that's also when you want to publish application deadlines. And you see in early March, you want to use an a late application deadline so that um, you get students that are already applied to the campus. Um, so you know that they're kind of interested in coming to the campus um, and you can kind of attract as many people as you can. Um, but so after January, there's February, you can do a bunch of outreach too via um, email to um, potential applicants after the FAFSA deadline. And so a lot of our Bonner programs have that um, have that financial requirement. And so the FAFSA deadline is usually February 1st, though it changes based on campus as well. Um, so that's something you can do when you're partnering with admissions that maybe you can get um, maybe an email list of people that you can send out the information about Bonner programs to or have financial aid send it out to them. Um, because after this point is normally when people are trying to think, okay, so now I applied to school and now how am I gonna afford it? And so that's why another reason for having um, a late application deadline, generally in early March, and then having a quick turnaround in the sense that you wanna be able to read those applications and then respond quickly to let um, applicants know about the interview. And so um, interviews normally happen in late March, and then you wanna send out notifications of awards and acceptances into the Bonner programs by early April, um, no later than two weeks before that May 1st deadline. So you want students to be able to know that they're, they got into the Bonner program so that they can, that can help in their decision um, to come to the campus as well. Um, so that's a little bit about the sample deadline, I mean sample timeline. And this definitely is flexible and changes based on campus as well. Um, and so thinking about Bonner applications, um, so it's the Bonner application is pretty standard. Nearly every single Bonner program has a Bonner application. So it's important to think about accessibility. So a lot of the times there, um, it's an online um, electronic submission, but also um, it's also available as a downloadable file so that um, students who don't have access to computers um, can download it um, at the library, print it out, and then submit it that way as well. Um, and normally it comes down to Bonner applications have about five different components. So first, there's information about the Bonner program, then you're asking about the applicant's personal information, so their name, their high school, that type of thing. Um, short answer questions, that creates the bulk of the application. And then um, letters of recommendation is optional, so um, a small a small minority of our Bonner campuses ask for one to two letters of recommendation. Um, and this is something that maybe you can consider doing if you really want to try and get a committed cohort. Um, I know, Sienna, you said you had so many applicants, so maybe something that can help narrow it down a little bit more from the get-go is um, including a letter of recommendation. And then analysis, so how do you an, um, analyze your Bonner applications to see who should be accepted or who should go on to an interview? How many um, applicants are you guys accepting at Siena out of the 600? Uh, about 20. Oh my God. Yeah, so wow. we, have a lot, we have a lot to go through. Yeah, I'm so, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so thinking about, um, I'm sure all of you probably have either some idea of an application or an application you all have used in um, the past. But um, I kind of took, so we've had a lot of um, applications that come in as resources. So I've been looking at a lot of them and to kind of help in this process, maybe to evaluate the Bonner application you have or the one, or to just um, improve it or to create one of your own. Um, I created um, this resource, this tool called the Bonner Application Roadmap. So like I said, most, um, 
Most modern applications have five different components. And so this tool is split into those five components and it compiles all of the modern applications from about 10 different Bonner campuses, um, leaders and Bonner, Bonner leader and Bonner scholar programs. And so it's basically set up so that you can go through each portion and then kind of pick and choose um, the things that you need. And so first the information about the Bonner program, it's like, these are some of the things that you should include in this section. Um, and then you can pick and choose. And then two, an applicant's personal information. These are the things that are most commonly asked um, of applicants. And then you can pick and choose. And then next is short um, answer questions. This is probably the most helpful part, I would say, is that um, this is a compilation about, I think there's about seven different themes of questions that Bonner programs ask most often. And so this is like a compilation of all those questions. So you can kind of look at it and adapt and pull the questions that are most applicable to you. Um, and so I definitely have a link to this and this is on um, the wiki as well, which you'll have a link to. So you can definitely check that out and use um, of it what you wish. And also on our wiki, we have examples of actual applications from um, Bonner programs across our network. So you can look at the one from Brown, you can look at one from Ursinus, you can look at one from Rutgers Camden, you can look at ones from Mars Hill. And there's about 10 applications that you can access and look at um, on our Bonner wiki. And those are also the ones that I kind of use to create that tool that you can use that kind of compiles all of these different applications together. So that's a little bit about Bonner applications. And most um, Bonner programs also have a Bonner interview uh, following the Bonner application. And most often these are on-campus interviews, although Skype interviews are also very common um, because not everybody can come on campus. Although we do recommend it if you um, can maybe like intersect it with accepted students day where a lot of students come. Um, on-campus interviews are often really, really helpful. Um, those Skype interviews are just as awesome too. Um, so when we're talking about on-campus interview components, um, there's normally about five different things that um, programs do when students come on, when applicants come on um, campus. Um, Skype interviews normally just include um, like an information, a very, very brief information session and a personal interview. But when students come on campus, you can also engage them in a couple other things, um, like a financial aid session for the parents, um, a group process where you kind of see how they engage with one another. Um, and then they can have interaction with current and Bonner students as well, which can get them excited and kind of get more of a feel for what um, the Bonner program actually is. And so just breaking down each of these sections, um, the information session is pretty much um, self-explanatory. It's just, um, and if you can include a community partner or a campus um, staff or faculty on that, it's really great to be able to show um, like what Bonner is, what this campus is, to kind of just share that information. But then next, the personal interview, um, also compiling a bunch of questions from across our network from about seven different campuses. Our interview questions generally fall within nine th different themes. Um, so there's these nine themes here. So how, how did the applicants fit within the Bonner program? Do they show um, attributes of teamwork and relationship building? So these are the questions that, um, that Bonner programs normally ask. And so to kind of help you figure out um, what you want to ask during your interview, um, there's also this tool that I created where it's compiling, once again, like I said, seven different um, Bonner interview questions. And based on each of these themes, it's like you can pick and choose which of these questions you want to ask or adapt um, to fit your application process. And so feel free to use that as well um, and add to it as you may. And so there's also a link to that. And then, so that was the personal interview. And then thinking about um, if students come on campus, um, what kind of financial aid session you can have. So this is really important. Like I said, if you have a partnership with your financial aid office, it's really great to have a staff member from that department come um, because they can also field questions about financial aid that are not necessarily Bonner exclusive too. Um, but some important things to explain during that session um, is that a Bonner Scholar program really says that um, 
It prides itself on, itself on helping students meet their total educational need. So what does that really mean and being able to break down those pieces? So the Bonner Scholarship, which is normally 2,500, which is to help with um, books and um, other personal expenses. And then there's loan caps, and then there's an education award that helps with paying off your tuition at the end and think, talking about the fast fund, summer earnings. So being able to talk about all of those things and really talking about those benefits. Um, and also as Bonner Leader Schools, making sure you explain either your scholarship or how federal work study or AmeriCorps works um, so that parents and students also just really understand how their financial aid is packaged if they're a part of the Bonner program. Um, and also there's thinking about this group process. So um, a lot of campuses have started to include this, um, this piece of their interview process where um, we've noticed over, over many years now that it's important that Bonners know how to work together and as a community, that community piece is huge. So this group process part of the interview allows um, you as Bonner staff and your committee, of your recruitment committee, to kind of see um, how your applicants work together, um, if they're respectful of each other, of diverse opinions, and, um, and it kind of just gives a little bit a more, like more of a chance for you to kind of get to know them. And so um, some examples of what you could do during this group time, so it's normally an hour or so, you could do a four corners activity. So um, that's one of our, um, our training modules on the website, um, on our Bonner Wiki, where you have four corners where it's, um, I strongly agree, um, agree, disagree, or strongly disagree. And you just say different phrases and then people move to that corner of the room and then they kind of discuss in that corner. So um, I know at Barry they do something where, with phrases like, I believe the American dream is achievable for all people. And then all your applicants split and then they kind of talk and you can kind of observe to see how well they interact with others. Um, respect other opinions. Um, you can do scenario-based discussions. So I know at our sinus, what we did is that um, you can have a couple scenarios drawn up. So things that maybe challenges that Bonner's face. So you can write up a scenario like you're at a service site and one of um, your volunteer coordinator and one of um, the volunteers at your site is being really disrespectful to the clients. What do you do? And so it's like one of those things where you can kind of, it's just a way to be able to observe, or you can ask them to um, craft an ideas to action project. So how well do they collaborate together um, and work as a team to be able to, to create a project that they can all agree on and present. Um, and last, you can also do an interactive discussion. So you can ask them all to read an article or watch a TED talk and have a discussion on that. Um, and so there's a lot of different things you can do to kind of observe how they work together. So that's a piece that's been really helpful um, for a lot of modern campuses and um, programs on how to distinguish who's a really good applicant and committed to the program. Um, and last, when you're on, when you have an on-campus interview, um, you can also have um, applicants interact with current modders. So you can often include like a social informal hangout time. So even in between different pieces of their um, interview, you can um, have them have lunch together. Um, they can be overnight hosts. So if it's intersecting with an accepted student's day, um, your Bonners can serve as overnight hosts and you can, they can really get to know them that way. Um, Bonners can be giving campus tours and applicants can even go and maybe um, like shadow a service site or something like that as well to really get a feel for what the Bonner program is. And so that's kind of, um, the application and interview process in a nutshell. Um, and so I know there were a lot of resources in there and just to kind of pull them together, all of those resources. I've been talking about the Bonner Wiki and so here's um, a link up to the right you see where um, we have a recruitment and selection wiki page. So not only all this information that I shared, but more as well um, is on here. And so there's four different sections. And if you go under like campus examples, you'll also see downloadable versions of all like of many different Bonner applications and Bonner interview questions from Bonner programs across our network. Um, and just a recap of the ones that I've shared with you today. Um, the Bonner application roadmap, 
is a resource you can use. The Bonner Interview Database Tool, so all those questions you can use during your um, Bonner interviews. And then also, one last thing to kind of pull it all together is, um, this is a six-page um, worksheet handout, so you can also use it to um, do a little bit of visioning around um, your recruitment goals, challenges for your program, different pipelines who you can work with. Um, so this is like a really comprehensive um, tool that you can use to, to kind of guide your recruitment and selection as well. And so all of those things are linked there, but also on our Bonner Wiki. Um, and so I just wanted to end um, there and I have upcoming webinars. So this is the Bonner Recruitment recruitment and selection webinar, which is in January. And we had um, a senior intern role in resources and running effective meetings. So you can look at those um, at that link in the right. Um, but in February and March, we also have two other webinars that you can tune into um, post Bonner career. So how do you leverage your Bonner experience um, into postgraduate life? And then how do you transition leadership as well? Um, and so I know I'm cutting it really close here, so I think we have one minute left. But do you all have any questions or concerns? You can feel free to email me or call, um, but also feel free to share them right now as well. Are you all good? Thank you so much. This was really helpful. Oh, I'm, I'm really glad. Yeah, feel free to use any of that and reach out to me if you need anything. Good luck, you guys. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you. I know it's lunchtime, so <laughs> I appreciate it. All right. Bye. Bye, everyone.